と、えっ、ー、と、まず、シェーン・マッシューズ准教授で、クイーンズランド工科大学から今日お越しいただいてます。で、あと、パブロさんなんですけど、えっ、ー、と、エルテックの CEO さんで、はい、チリの方で今日お越しいただいてます。よろしくお願いします。で、今日は DX について、違う、あの、フレーバーということで、ちょっと異なった視線で、あの、カルチュアルインテリジェンス、まあ、文化的な、その、ち、あの、まあ、知識というか、それと、まあ、カルチャー、まあ、文化的なバックグラウンドに関してもお話ししていただくということです。よろしくお願いします。はい。あの、はじめまして、よろしくお願いします。あの、日本語、少しです。あ、すみません。えっと、Thank you very much.、Uh, today,、uh, we wanna have some Matthew Shane's present today. We wanna discuss about the future for digital and transformation. So, マティオ、it's all for you, so I guess. えっと、未来の DX について、今日お二人で語,語ります。よろしくお願いします。Slides? We have slides, though. I gotta look at myself. <laughs> it's a bit odd. <laughs> okay, so that's us, the trio. Okay, this is my university. Uh, in Queensland, in Brisbane.、Um, our business school is like、uh, top 50 in the world.、Uh, we are double ACSB, which is the American plus the European plus the MBA.、Um, and what I wanted to talk about is like many of us do our skill sets in very、uh, siloed areas. But what I would say is that we need both、uh, different types of capabilities. Different types of skill sets that we need. Some digital, some more human.、Uh, some of the cultural intelligence or cultural capabilities. I think we need to move,、uh, move these into our personal skill sets so we can do a, a better job in our businesses and performance, especially in relation to internationalization. Okay. えっと、この画面なんですけども、えっと、えー、と、ま、シーンの大学で、えっと、トップ50と,と言われる大学で、かなり、あの、優秀な大学なんですけども、あの、ビックスっていうだけじゃなくて、ヒューマンスキルっていうかですね、あの、個人のスキルっていうのも、あの、ま、DX には必要です。Okay, so、um, you'll see this little tag here. I'm with the Australian Center for Entrepreneurship.、Um, I am an entrepreneur myself. I've owned my own business for 20 plus years. My background is marketing, okay, digital marketing back early 2000s. That's where I pushed my business in that space, and it was a very easy space at the time.、Um, now, much more complicated and much more sophisticated, but nonetheless, we're still moving through transformation 20 years. On. Okay.、Um, I think because of this digitalization, we are more interconnected. You know, and many of our businesses today that we start are going to have to be international to do well.、Um, and the opportunity to reach new markets is much easier than it's ever been before, which means that we're going to have to deal with different types of environments. <laughs> えっと、ミシュー先生は、アントレプレーナーということで起業されていて、えっ、ー、と、マーケティングの分野で20年の実績があります。で、あの、DX で、あの、もっとですね、インターコネクトといって世界で、まあ、つながる、あの、世界になってきていますし、もう少しあの、国際的に、あの、インターナショナルオプチュニティということで、あの、機会に、その、関わりある機会っていうのを DX で増えていくと思いますという話です。Okay, so, you know, because of this more interconnected world, we've got more trade and more trade from really small businesses into international markets. In the past, that didn't happen very often,、um, but today it's very, very common. And that's my area of research is smaller firms, medium firms that become international. And a lot of times they become international very, very quickly. So, they might be in 10, 15 different countries within the first one year or two years. And that might seem really good and really positive, and it is. But then it's also very complicated. And for companies to survive and do well, 
um, they need to understand the different environments that they're in, that their, their product is in, uh, because they're of different political systems, different economic systems, they're different people, that their thinking is different, their consumption is different, uh, their consumer psychology is different. Um, so my argument is you don't just need digital capabilities like digital marketing capabilities, but you also need a better cultural intelligence to actually deal with that. ありがとうございます。えっ、ー、と、先生が今おっしゃっていたのが、えっ、ー、と、もっとですね、あの、中小企業向けの、あの、国際マーケットが開かれるだろうというところで、えっ、ー、と、国によってやっぱりシステムが違うので、えっ、ー、と、ま、ますます複雑化していくだろうということで、あの、サバイブとおっしゃってましたけど、私たちはその中小企業とか、たくさん、まあ、抱えてますけど、サバイブしなきゃいけない、生き残っていらなきゃいけないっていう意味で、あの、えっ、ー、と、ハードスキルではなく、デジタルの技術ではなく、あの、文化の、あの、違いとかを理解する、あの、知識が必要になるだろうとおっしゃっています。So, so this is the, the cultural intelligence bit.、Um, so when we start to move across borders,、uh, we're going to have to understand how families work, how work environments happen, how to develop networks. And if I'm in China, that's very different to if I'm in Japan versus whether I'm in Chile.、Um, and a lot of my research is in many different countries. So currently I have research projects here in Japan. But also in Taiwan and in China and in Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, Kenya, in <laughs> Africa.、Um, and every time I have to relearn, rethink, and re strategize, have a different strategy about how I go about developing the project, completing the project, and developing my relationships with those people. And so it becomes very challenging to do that, very rewarding. Um, but it needs、uh, a little bit more of a reflection, okay? Not just knowledge. You can't just have knowledge, and I'll talk about this in the next slide. えっと、今ですね、えっと、マシン先生も非常にチャレンジされているということで、おっしゃられてたのがクロスボーダーということに。で、あの、本当に国境を越えているというところで、えっと、まあ、今、プロジェクトを抱えているのが、タイとか、中国とか、えっ、ー、と、ケニアとかアフリカとか、いろんなアジアの国も含め、いろんなビジネスを、えー、抱えてい,いらっしゃるんですけれども、やっぱりその文化の違いを超えて、マシュー先生もあのチャレンジしているという状況です。はい。Okay, so many times when we think about culture, we think about food and language. That's okay, but it's not enough. <laughs> To do business, you need a lot more.、Um, and it's a lot of times we think、uh, maybe a little bit too shallow about what culture is. You know, I've been coming to Japan for 20 years and I still know nothing. <laughs> it's still a very complicated place.、Uh, and I keep learning every time. Every time, a little bit more language, a little bit more understanding. I come to Fukuoka. I've been here twice before, but only for on holiday. This time I'm staying a little bit longer, I understand a bit better. So sometimes immersing yourself into the culture is the best way.、Um, making mistakes is the best way.、Um, and then interacting as much as I possibly can is the best way.、Um, but there's some skill sets that I need.、Um, and I'll talk about them in the next slide, which I think are important. えっと、まあ、文化なんですけど、あの、普通に考えられているのが、まあ、あの、お食事だとか、あのー、ですね、食べ物とか、歴史とかそういったものが文化だと思うんですけど、えっと、それは本当に浅くって、ビジネスにおけるあの、ビジネスだと結構深いところまで行くっていうところで、あのー、まあ、マシュ先生もあまり日本のことはあんま知らないとおっしゃってはいたんですけど、あの、休日とかあの来られていて、で、あの、まあ、もっとですね、対話をする、インタラクションっていうか、あの、対話をしたり、あの、長くステイしたりして、あの、まあ、それが文化を理解するっていうことの一番最善な方法ではないかということで、マシュ先生も今、あの、スキルセットといって、あの、スキルを磨いている。
文化の理解に対する、えー、スキルを磨いているというお話です。This is,、uh, this is what we call a cultural intelligence model. So, there's actually some software that you can get.、Um, the company, it's a model, but there's actually software you can buy, and it's out of、um, San Francisco. There's a center for cultural intelligence. So, if this is something you think you would like to do, they do a fantastic job at actually taking you through this program.、Um, so, there's Most people think about this knowledge. Okay, I get more information about a country, about their people, the market, the customers, political system, legal system, keep going on and on and on the weather, the climate, the consumer psychology, the value sets. I could keep going, but this is just one thing. And this is research. And as an entrepreneur, you need to do all of these now. Multinational corporations have teams of people that do this. Teams. If you're a startup or entrepreneur, you have to do this. So you have to do this bit, but you also have to have motivation. It needs to come from inside. You need to want to do business in international markets. The, the interesting thing for Fukuoka is you're so close to Taiwan and Korea and China. It's a very, very different place than the rest of Japan that I see. And, and maybe that's why I see some different innovation happen here, whereas I don't see that so much in Tokyo, where、I'm, I would normally spend my time.、Um, so I think there's some intrinsic, what we call global mindset, international mindset. We can measure this in individuals. So, this is the motivation, the knowledge, but then you have to plan and strategize about how you're going to achieve these cultural interactions. Sometimes they're domestic with multicultural teams, sometimes they're international with your market expansion. Okay. And then the, the more interesting one is this one when you finish one interaction, Do you think about it? Do you reflect on it? Do you think about how you can do it better? Okay, so there are, there's a whole framework you can think about if you're going to internationalize. It's a, it's a good skill set for you to have if you, if you want to do business internationally. And what we know is if all of these are higher, success is higher. We, we have the proof.、Uh, if, These are the skills and capabilities you have. Your international performance will be better. Better con more contracts, better contracts, bigger margins. You'll access the markets that you thought you wanted to access, et cetera. Now, this particular framework, Sony uses this, Google uses this, IBM uses this, they all use this. This is the one they use. I teach international business, international marketing, and I've been teaching for 21 years. This is the one the big multinational corporations talk about. If they have expats or they want to do internationalization, they all use this. It's very simple,、um, but it's very complete. It's got all of the pieces, I think, that are really important. マッシュ先生が話してたのは、えーと、カルチャルインテリジェンスといって文化的知性のモデルケースを今4つ挙げていただいてるんですけど、えー、と今ソフトウェアの開発とかってあのサンフランシスコが中心なんですけど、あのただ市場の調査とか、えー、と気候とかサイコロジーとかっていうのはただ一つの側面。ですね、あの調査のただの一つの側面でやっぱりやり遂げるためにはモチベーションがいるというところであのこういったあの、まあ、のモチベーションだとか知識戦略行動っていうのはあの Google とか Amazon とかが使っているあのモデルケースで、まあ、これ全てやってたら成功しますよとおっしゃっていました。なのであの重要なその文化的知性のモデルケースが四つあって、そのご紹介をしていただいたところです。ありがとうございます。はい。あ、I make no money from any of this <笑>。<笑><笑>
中に終えてるわけじゃありませんと。Now I hand over to Pablo, who will talk about the digital transformation and some of the more specific elements that are important for digital transformation. Thanks, Mike. Thanks. So, Pablo さんからもっと詳細の DX についてをあの発表していただきます。よろしくお願いします。Um, just briefly, I would like to introduce myself.、Um, I'm, my office is here, and、I'm, I have my startup. I'm the founder of Tsunagaru i n t e c h So, today,、uh, my expertise I have 15 years of experience in digital learning. I have worked in different countries, such、so、as the Netherlands,、um, Chile.、Um, before that, I was working in Australia for around 15 years in different areas. Today, I want to talk about DX. Everywhere, DX, 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 DX. What is DX or digital learning? えっと、えっと、パブロさんの発表です。パブロさんは、実はオフィスがここで、あのここに常時いらっしゃって、で、15年間 DX をやってまして、オーストラリアで同じ大学で学ばれたそうなんですけど、皆さん、あ皆さん、ここ、今見ているものが、もう DX ですというお話で、これから多分その話があると思います。This is the reality what happened in Japan now. The digital situation in Japan 2022. Japan is one of the lowest, is the lowest in the OEC countries. See numbers, Japan is facing 21 in the global market in digital、uh, digitalization. And just To give you an, a brief example, see about here business agility. Japan is in 62 position in the world. When we're talking about 2018, it was 55. Now we drop more, getting more behind than the rest of the actually the many countries. In terms of adapt, adaptive attitude, here in attitudes of globalization, it's number 48. So, it's not being open to innovate. And so, societies, they need to be open to collaborate, innovate. And in terms of knowledge transfer, Japan is almost 50, 49. So, this is the reality that、um, Japan is facing in the global scale at the moment. えっと、日本の現状をお伝えすると,、えー、っと、まずビジネスアジリティっていうのが、そのビジネスの、なんていうかな、<笑>ファースト。なんか俊敏性ですね、はい。早くビジネスが動くかっていうジャンルで、えっと、2022年は62人となっています。で、それからおっしゃってたのが、グローバル化に対する意識、これも48。で、えっと、ナレッジトランスファー、知識の伝達ですね。まあ、一つ学んで何か違うところにつなげるっていうところも49位というところで、ちょっとあの日本が遅れているという状態です。And everyone talking about digital transformations.、Uh, everyone, I want to tell you the practicality of the digital transformation is when we use digital technologies to create a modified process, improve process, but also change internal culture in the business. Because we can have a thousand of books with digital, with digital transformation, but the practicality is how we can help the business to change. And not only the people, the culture in the company, but at the same time, the good, the good wealth of the people. The people can have improved their lifestyle with digital transformation. And I want to show you in the next few slides a few cases how we can help with digital transformation. Can the people can have a better even life? One example that is very simple Japanese still use Hanko, my company. I was so surprised. I registered my company here and I have to get a Hanko. In the rest of the world, that's my seat, Hanko. And we have a signature. This is the most ex basic ex example of what is digital transformation. Move from Hanko to a e signature. えっと、何が DX なんですかっていうところで、まあ、あのデジタル技術を利用して社内のあの組織文化とかあのビジネスの,その仕組み自体を変えることが DX ですと言っていてで、えー、と
、この後のスライドで、あの、いろいろちょっとどう、あの、パプロさんたちが、あの、ヘルプできるのかっていうところは、あの、お伝えしていただくんですけど、今、例えば、その DX の一番いい、えっ、ー、と、例っていうのが、ハンコ、ハンコ文化ですね。私たちはハンコで、あの、いろんな書類を、フィニッシュさせるわけですけど、世界中でハンコっていうのはない,ないので、そういう、まあ、DX の一番いいっていうのが、日本のハンコ文化ではないかっていうお話でした。One example, real example. A couple of weeks ago, big news overseas. In a city in, in Japan, the person working in the city lost and drive a thousand of data from the people from the city. It's big news. At the end, we can see how could it be possible? Do we have All the data from the entire city in one USB. That's the basic the how we need to implement very quick in Japan the digital transformation. えっと、数日前ニュースで見たんですけど、USB に個人情報がいっぱい入ってて、それをこうなくしちゃったっていうことで、とても大きなあのニュースになってたんですけども、まあ、それが、まあ、BBC ニュースで流れてたという、世界的に大きく報道されたっていうことですね。How we can change that working with technologies? And one example, it's digital learning transformation. What is digital learning transformation? I want to ask you, and here an open question. What do you think is digital learning transformation? For example, anyone? Digital learning transformation はどう,どういうことだと思いますか何かご意見ある方いらっしゃいますかキムさん。<laughs> Yes, I think it's, it's a little bit difficult for me, but、um, maybe digital learning transformation is learning about the technology and learning about the process and learning about the、uh, recent,、um, how to say, Uh, learning about the recent topic about the digital transformation. Hi, I got all the time. He doesn't need me. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I know. He says something very important.、Uh, what is digital learning transformation? He s a y process. Because it's really, really important in the, in the transformation. And I want to show you the next one. What is digital learning to us? Kim さんはプロセスが DX に必要だということで、それがパブロさんが重要だとおっしゃっています。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。In simple words, what is digital learning transformation? What is DX? And I will explain you using technologies to innovate when we mix with basically traditional learning. What is traditional learning? It's basically what we say in Japan here. We say, Offline. I never heard that. It's all in Japan. Everyone u s e offline. I never heard that offline. We,、uh, we say usually traditional learning or face to face, but in Japan they use offline. And if we mix all together, we put in the blender machine, we create a digital learning transformation. And basically, i s use a p p l i c a t i o n of technologies that can help corporate sector for training, development, or any education. えっとまあ、何が、D D えっと、デジタルラーニングトランスメーションかっていうとあの、まあ、適切な技術で、まあ、イノベーションを起こすかくあの革新を起こすっていうのがまずあってでそれから、えっと、トラディショナルラーニングっていうのがあの、まあ、対面の勉強の機会だと思うんですけど、えっと、パブロさんはオフラインっていうのを日本,で、まあ、聞いた日本でしか聞いたことがないとおっしゃってたんですけどあのえー、と対面からオフあの、対面での学習っていうのがトラディショナルラーニングですね。であと、まあ、企業とか学習、学校とかで役立つそのイノベーティブな技術の活用っていうのが、あのまあ、その2つの組み合わせで起こるということですね。ありがとうございます。This is one example here, a、okay. cube.Very、um, simple, it's very real.、Uh, 
was facing queue when I was a member here. I see the poor staff queue making register of the form. Every new client came here. They have to fill the form. They have to wait more than five minutes. The lady have to type in the computer and then they have to enter. That's the problem. What we did, I thought, well, I, I'm here a member. I should, I should do something for them. So I identified the problem. I found the problem and I did to the staff, why if you change this process more agile, more digital? So I trained the staff, the Q staff, to use digital transformation, use a workshop, very short training, micro training, very compact, how to use registration form, digital, QR code. And then when we talk about in numbers, the impact, companies, they like numbers. And this is one real example. Q, with what the very basic uh, digitalization, they say operational cost. And how we calculate this operational cost is simple. How many papers they don't print anymore because it's all digital? How many costs save in using the photocopy to print the material? And also the impact of the staff. Because I remember when I left, I saw the Q staff, we was working over time feeling this massive paper, this kind of feeling in the paper in the Excel file. When you use digital transformation, you can accelerate the process, but at the same time, the employee can go home early. We want to keep, keep staff with, stay more time with the family. And impact for the environment. We don't need to print more paper. We can save trees. And we also, we can save the printing system, the chemical that we produce, uh, the printing cost. So. えっと、DX の活用事例があの、ちょうど今日、今日というかあの、パブロさんが旧でやったことなんですけど、あの、クライアントの登録、受付の登録、ま、紙でやってたのをデジタル化しましたっていうことで、まずあの、パブロさんが
And after this um, framework, we try to identify agility, again, process, accelerate the process, communities. So we will have three people, the teacher, student assistant, teaching assistant, and myself. University save operational costs too, because they don't have to hire a large staff of developers, designers. They work directly with startups that they will offer all these solutions. So they can save operational costs, no hiring, outsourcing, expensive team. And after that, we also did our research. And it was interesting because the, the professor at that time at Kyushu, she recommend and she identified some really behind Japanese behind history about what we do. And it's the name of the, the history is about the three, the, three, the, three arrows, the three arrows, the legend, Japanese legend, that three arrows together never broken. So what do we do? The collaboration between the teacher, students, and our tech company like us, together we work together, collaboration, we are never broken. And we do this in six weeks, not only because of us, because we work as a team. ありがとう。次のいいDXの例が九州大学の時代なんですけども、あの、コロナの影響で、えっと、対面授業がなくなって、えっと、ま、中国の方とかいらっしゃったんですけど、ま、生徒さんにとてもコロナの状況が影響して
we say that there is a value in the interaction between peoples, a value when we give to the worker employees uh, the opportunity to work together and resolve problems. えっと、ポルノさんが今おっしゃっていたのが、社内でコミュニティを作ることの,あの重要性をおっしゃられてまして、えっと、まず、まあ、自分たちの課題を明確化するっていうところと、あとは2番目はオープンと書かれていますけれども、まあ、いろんなことをディスカッションして、あのオープンに話し合うということで、まずその障害を取り除くというところと、をまあ、イノベーションをあのそれがあの推進する、まあ、オープンに話し合うことであのクリエイティブなあのオープンに話し合える機会を作るということのところとあとインプルーブメントなんですけどこれは改善というところであの、まあ、いろんなこう、えー、と継続的にそのディスカッションすることでそ,しそれを組織の DNA 化する。っていうのと、あとは最後に技術的なところなんですけども、まあ、プロを作る、DX のプロを作るっていうところで、あの、様々な、えっと、分野の知識とかスキルを、あの、チームとして、あの、作っていく、そういうことの重要性をお話しされてました。And why companies should collaborate with, with startups or partner with us?、Uh, we are a small startup. But there's,、uh, it could, there are many, many,、um, let's say, point, main factors why companies should be open to work. One of the key important is rapid adoptions. When we're talking about accelerated adoptions, working with a startup, traditional companies, they have their own process. For thousands of, for many, many years, they are using the same process. But when someone, a new startup, bring new ideas, process change. When we start bringing these kind of new ideas and working as a team, as I mentioned before, process change. When we say about we, you, we can, a startup can innovate and bring new technologies at the same time in the companies, these products can make company more competitive. And that is why it happened over Airbnb,、um, Google, have been disrupted. The traditional systems because those startups, and I believe many, many around the world, they bring this kind of innovation. One other thing, or point is identify challenge and identify the problem companies cannot do alone. If you are a company that you stay working for 20 years, the same process, you will never see what is happening outside. You need to be able to open to bring new ideas, a new point of view. And this collaboration between the startup, that is the perfect between collaboration、um, and bring this kind of、um, identify strategic objectives, identify new w a y of work. And the third part is set specific target. So when the companies、uh, have a clear target, startup work in the very short work. We work in a very short framework. We don't plan for one year, we plan quick. So, when a company wants to do a process for five years, don't expect to have this because don't work with startups. The idea, ideally, concept working with startups is because we bring agility to your project that they normally take you five years or two years to think, which m a k e a framework. Let's say accomplish this in the first quarter of the semester, in one year, no more than one year or half of the year. But that's normally when you work with a startup. We bring quick. Solutions, quick implementation, proof of concept, and testing. And the last, well, something very important is 90% of business agree that collaboration is the critical point for foster innovation, Kai PMG. Hi, e t o 今お話しされたのが、えっ、ー、と、な、なぜ企業は、スタートアップ企業と、あの、連携するべきかということで、まあ、この連携が重要だと言っているんですけども、えっ、ー、と、まず、Google とかも最初スタートアップ企業だったので、まあ、競争力とか、あの、維持のために、あの、まあ、迅速にその、即順応性って書いてありますけど、あの、早く適用する必要がある。で、あの、まあ、なぜかっていうと、新しい技術とか、新しい誰かが、あのー、新しいシステムを取り入れたらもうプロセスを変えなきゃいけないので、まああのー、早くその適用していかなきゃいけないというところとあとは、えーっとですね
、課題の共有、課題の明確化ですね。何がこう、えっ、ー、と、企業戦略で必要なのかっていうところを、まずそれを、まあ、アイデンティファイ、明確化するっていうところも大事だと思っているというところです。で、それから、あの、具体的な目標設定なんですけど、まあ、1年とか、四半期ごとに、あの、目標を設定しなければいけないというところで、なぜかというと、その、パブロさんたちは、その、アジリティが、まあ、あの、早いスパンで、あの、解決策を提示できるということで、あの、まあ、あの、短いスパンで、その、達成目標を設定するというところが大事ですとおっしゃってます。それで、最後に言われたのが、えー、っと、企業の 90% が、あの、まあ、ビジネスのコラボレーションというのは、えー、っと、イノベーションの育成に不可欠だということで、あの同意しているというところです。以上です。はい。ありがとう。あ、um,。this is one of the last presentation and slides before we wanna take some question of you。あの、we are。あの、basically I wanna introduce our business。we are a startup based in here in Q co-working space。and we try to work。Uh, we support companies or organizations in the digital transformation, e learning, and service. And the main idea is accelerate the innovation in Japanese companies, but also overseas companies. We have a main three focus of our startup. One is the co design, a co build micro workshop or training. What we did with universities like Kyushu or digital transformation like we did at Q. The second, our Main products we do in our process when we start working in our company, we identify a big problem in Japanese companies and overseas. They need systems to、uh, corporate training s y s t e m to provide training to the staff, but in a, a system need to be very simple. So, in this,、uh, our pro, when we start working in our company, we need some. Uh, questions. We did some research and we identified some many people like, would like to have a software that is very simple with a very simple interface and it could be implement many、um, e c o s y s t e m So we start building Manabu. The Manabu is our it's an MVP, our software, and it's going to be, we plan to, re,、uh, it's in, it's in、uh, MVP at the moment. It's very,、uh, the design we have at the moment. And it's going to be very simple because the idea is to prototype our software with the companies in Japan and overseas. And this software will provide pointing system to workers and they will now reward employees. And the third part of our ecosystem, we have a community, Japan Ethic community, in which we try to collaborate as a partners、uh, and universities. So, yeah, this is us. Arigato. とパブロさんの会社の紹介なんですけど、えっと、パブロさんが、えっと、まずそのちょっと中小企業ではあるんですけどスタ、スタートアップ企業ということで福岡にいらっしゃいます。でえっと、DX を推進するっていうところで、あのトレーニングをメインにあのされていてであの、まあ、システムを開発していて、その名前が学ぶっていうんですけども、あのシンプルなソフトウェアによってあのト,レあのトレーニングできるっていうシステムで、あのリワードでちょっと受けたらなんかあのいいことがあるみたいな。何<笑>でしたっけ<笑> ?Amazon Gift、uh, Ticket or Rewarding. Ah, so this is it. Yeah. We, the idea of this system, we can also provide reward to staff, Amazon or Apple. So companies reward employees with For, for the effort to learning. はい、えーと。受けられた方の努力を評価するということで、あのリボーディング、アマゾンのチケットとかを提供しているというところです。で、あのもう一つ、ジャパンテック、えーと、エドテックコミュニティというのを作られて、これからそのイノベーションを加速していこうとしておられます。あつ Where we can find you, us, we are here. We are based in here, Q. You can connect with us to our website directly to our social media, SNS, and connect us, email us. If you have any situation you want to implement your digital learning, please connect with us. In addition, before to finish our presentation,、um, after,、uh, we will offer 
some little snack and some links. So please don't go home, stay here. We have some nice cheer and wine today for you. And also, sorry, we would like to invite you after this uh, presentation to open questions. And we will want to feel free to say or ask anything related to our presentation today. Thanks. えっと、あの、パブロさんいつも大体急にいらっしゃって、あの、DX there's any question, anything related to our presentation, feel free to ask. Hello, uh, th thank you very much uh, for your uh, for the presentation. Um, I just just interested um, based on on your experience, um, I guess to the, the both of you really having having uh, experienced um, so DX in in other countries as well. Um, I think of course Japan underwent great growth and it worked what the system worked for a very long time. Um, but there is uh, always a challenge in changing, right? And so I wonder from your experience in other countries, which have also gone through growth and also had to change, what do you think that it is that um, Japan can learn from other countries being able in, to change um, in, in some way? I guess depends on the company, of course, but like if you have any thoughts on what, um, in terms of motivating change, what Japan could learn from other countries, um, I'd be very interested to hear from your experience. ご質問ありがとうございます。えっと、DX に関して、あの、パブロ I have some very definite thoughts about that <laughs> um, because uh, I spent a lot of my time in places like Taiwan and China uh, where innovation is incredibly rapid. Um, it is the opposite to Japan and Japan is going that way, unfortunately, and I don't want it to go that way. I want it to go that way. Um, so we, we feel the same. We're very passionate about Japan. We want Japan to do really well. And I absolutely take your point. Um, there's historical reasons why the technology innovation doesn't happen here. Uh, the infrastructure system in Japan was so good for so long, for decades. After t World War II, they had the intranet system uh, between the big, man big firms, um, and it was well established and it was world standard. The internet came, everyone else in the world started to accelerate japan said well, we have a great system why would we change unfortunately they're now behind and we see this in the numbers oecd and performance digitalization here is very very poor um and it's and it's not in the consumer market in your mobile penetration markets very high but in, in firms and how they adopt digitalization, like Pablo is talking about in the processes, it's very poor. It's incredibly poor. It's at the standard of a, a much lower country than it should be. How does that change? I would love to snap my fingers and say, well, look, let's all do something about it. The government has been trying to implement many um, you know, systems and programs to try to do that, but it, it comes down to people. Are, are people prepared to change? Now, the pandemic changed a lot of us. 
and a lot of people's mindset. So I think that's the start. And I think, you know, getting universities, for example, to change their processes, go online. Other firms had to go online. Uh, people had to work remotely. And before the pandemic, there's no way they would have done that. It, it was the same in Australia. It was the same in many countries. Everyone just had to go online. So I think that that may have sparked something here. Um, my feeling about being in this particular part of the country is that they're ahead. The innovation here is really different. It tends to be less conservative and more open, um, culturally more open, innovation technologically more open. I see some very different things happen in this part of the world. Um, it's still behind. If I go to China, it's just lightning, lightning fast. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of money behind it too, investment, government, people, and they're very entrepreneurial. Culturally, they want to make a lot of money, right? And in Japan, that's not the primary focus. It's a different, it's a di totally different mindset. Um, if I go to China and I ask who wants to be an entrepreneur in a room full of a hundred people, 99 hands go up. I asked the same question in Tokyo, maybe five. I ask it down here, it's much higher. It's very interesting. I don't know the, I don't know because I don't know Japan well enough to say what I think might be some really things, but I think this, I think Kyushu and Fukuoka is actually showing the way. It's more open, culturally more open, um, and innovation, more innovation orientation. And, and I've never presented in a train station. <laughs> this is, a, it's an amazing space. This is really a cool space. I, um, I've done research in Shenzhen in ecosystems and in Brisbane and, and Taiwan and a few other places, but this is actually really cool. I know it sounds funny, but it's actually just a really cool space. Thank you very much. Shin 先生からだったんですけど、あの台湾とかえっと中国であの DX とかもやられてるんですけど、あの彼らは本当ラピッドってとっても速いスピードが速いということで、日本とそれは正反対って言われていて、で日本がこう欲しくないっておっしゃっていて。もう私たちはその情熱的に日本がこう向上する情熱を持っておられるっていうことで,で日本が言うのはとてもインフラシステムが整っているっていうところで第二次世界大戦後あの大きな企業とかがあの、まあ、インフラシステムをいいものを作ってくれたっていうことで、まあ、日本がその良いインフラシステムを持っていることで私たちはちょっと安定をしてしまってちょっと遅れているんではないかっていうことをおっしゃっていましたなので、まあ、プロセスを変えるっていうところがちょっとあのちょっと不足している分野なのかなというところででもうあのシェーンさんはもうすぐ変えたいとあの日本が向上するリークスで向上するように変えたいというふうに、えー、とおっしゃっています。で、えっ、ー、と、政治とか国とかですね、えっ、ー、と、ガジェットとか、もう予算持ってて、まあ、準備はできてるのかもしれないんですけど、こう、私たちの、あの、まあ、労働者レベルでまだ準備ができていないというところですね。で、あの、来れないと、本当に、あの、リモートワークしたことがない方とか、あの、オンラインにも、事務的にこう行かなきゃいけないというあの状,あの状況にはなってきたんですけども、まあ、そういった意味でも日本人というのが、そのちょっとコンサバ的っていうんですかね、なんかあの変わりたくないコンサバ的っていうところで、ちょっとその、まあ、台湾とか中学とかの人たちとはちょっと違うマインドセットを持ってあのいるっていうので、ちょっと日本よりはちょっとにあの中国よりはちょっと遅れているっていうところかな。であの中国というのがもう投資も,もうバンバンしますし、あの政府もあの協力しますしであの、企業ですね、中国の国内の企業がもうあの3つのチームになって、ガンガン儲けているということで、なので、まあ、そういうところで、あの
日本がちょっと遅れているっていう状況ですけど、えー、と福岡はあのー、アジアに近くて、とっても文化的にオープンなので、あのーまあ、そこはとってもルークスがこうあの定着する要素ではあるんじゃないかなっていうところで、で、あのー、もし、えっ、ー、と、西尾先生は駅でプレゼンがしたことない人、<笑>こういった駅の近くでプレゼンしたことがないっていうところでめっちゃ来るやって言ってまして、なので<笑>、それはとてもいいあの機会だったということでした。以上です。ありがとう。There's, I think, another question there. We have time. This one, this one is more operational because I, know, I realize that you are talking about Manambu as your, shall I say, it's, it's one of the potentially flagship products that you may have for、mm. the Nagaru attack. Yes. So the question here would be my image of this thing would be is something close to a learning, learning management system, LMS. Yes. So if let's say you are pitching to a client in Japan, And you mentioned that you already did the market research and you did the ground, the groundwork, right? So, how would you pitch it to people such that, hey, this is what distinguishes this LMS from other commercial, commercially available LMSs such as Google Classroom, Talent LMS, Canva, you know,、uh, Canvas, sorry, Canvas, this kind of thing. Please. Thank you. えっと、学ぶっていうシステムが本当に可能性の感じるシステムっていうところで、で、あの、イメージとしては、あの、まあ、それを使ってどういうふうにパブロさんがピッチピーポーっていうところですよね。なんか、商業的な成功のためにどういうふうに、あの、人々をモチベートさせてるっていうか、そういうところですね。お聞きたい。うん。です。Well,、uh, as a startup, we have to pitch our products.、Uh, Manawa is, is our product. We try to change when we pitch in terms of, we don't talk about learning management system. This is very old traditional. We say, we even change the name. We talk about virtual learning ecosystem because it's all virtual now, it's all ecosystems. So, first, we, we try to mention about virtual learning ecosystems. When we identify the dif differences between、uh, For a system, for example, Kyushu has their own system. I had the opportunity to see that. One of the feedback that I got is too complex. First thing, oh, it's too complex. It's too much things to do. The second thing is complexity. The first, the second one that I got when I interview people and in our research was I don't feel motivation to learn. Why I should use this software? Why? Why is the reason? Second one, motivation. How we can engage the people with motivation. And that's why when we present Manavu, and she mentioned before, it was about pointing system, digital badge, gamification. And also, the most important is reward employees. The only way that you can keep people learning, improvement is reward employees. So, one of the second part that we provide in our system, uniqueness of our system, is reward employees. The pointing system, exchange gift card, so on. And other things that is really interesting, and I was talking to her with Shane about that, how we can be a difference, make our difference between our learning manager with other system. It's basically we also integrate NFT, micro, micro data, that way you can get the digital badge behind of this、uh, micro data, there's NFT. With micro and very、uh, private information, that it's when you do a course, when you do a training, you want to get your private information. And that's as we also create a digital patch with NFT micro data. And in addition of that, the five point why we are different, it's we also integrate, integrate、uh, metaverse. So it's not only an online system that you can learn courses, course content. We already、uh, this、uh, part discussed with potential metaverse companies that they can use our software, integrate their pro product inside our, and provide metaverse training inside the Manabu. So, if I、uh, simplify what we do collaborations, identify NFT, implement technologies,、uh, simply, and the most important, Reward employees. But 
at the moment the companies don't do that. えっと、ご質問ありがとうございます。えっと、えっと、自分たちの学ぶっていうシステムは、えっと、ラーニングエコシステムと言っていて、ま,あ、まずはそのアイデンティファイとか、その違いとか課題を、えっと、見つけるっていうところがまず一つなんですけども、えっと、日本のシステムって結構複雑なので、えっと、まあ、そこはちょっとしなきゃいけないことがたくさんあって、ちょっと大変ということをおっしゃっていました。で、あとは、あと、モチベーション付け、動機付けなんですけども、えっと、まあ、この学ぶっていうシステムで、リロード、リワードっていうのがあって、あの、まあ、コースを受けて終了したら、NFT 付きの,あのデジタルパッチがもらえるみたいで、で、それが、まあ、外部に有効だっていうこと。でまあ、さっきおっしゃってたアマゾンの,あのギフトチケットとかもそうなんですけど、そういうあの報酬をつけて、あの生徒さんにあのモチベーションを持ってもらうっていうところで、まあ、考え方を変えるっていうのと、あの動機づけっていうところで、この学ぶっていうシステムはとっても優秀なあのシステムですっていうところで、であとはあのメタバースの企業を、えっと、招いてその学ぶシステムで導入してるみたいで、えっと、メタバース環境であの学習ができるっていうのも一つの良いところではないかということでした。Thanks. はい。I think that's it. So,、uh, if there's any more question, one more we can take. We have, I don't know if we have question in the our Zoom chat, but、um, I'm not sure if we can. 何かご質問ありますかあ、ごめんなさい。ありがとうございます。Uh, thank you for your speech today. あ、日本語でもいいですか大丈夫です。ありがとうございます。ます大丈夫です。ありがとうございます。えっと、お二人のお話を聞いて、すごい、あのー、いろんなことに挑戦されてて、すごいなと思ったんですけども、お二人が、その、例えば、ここ日本で、の異国の地でも、なんか挑戦するってすごく大変なことだと、思うんですけども、そうやってお二人がそのお仕事に頑張れるその動機って何ですかそのなんか動機を知りたいわけは、その自分はあの仕事を辞めて来年からちょっとハンガリーでコンピューターサイエンスを勉強しに行く予定なんですけども、ちょっと自分はまだ動機も、えー、知識もすごいまだすごい下の方なので、お二人からその動機そのお仕事とかに対する動機をすごいあの見つけるヒントがもらえたらなって思います。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。えっと、He asked,、uh, you guys are challenging in, you know, overseas, like in Japan, and、uh, it is so tough, and he、uh, is really impressed by, you know, your activities in Japan. And, Business in Japan. And、uh, could you tell us、uh, about your motivation that you know you can go for it in Japan, in a different countries? And、uh, also, he is、uh, going to study abroad in Hungary on、Q、computer science. and But still, he doesn't have a l o t of knowledge about it. So、uh, he wants to learn from you. About especially on motivation, you know, like going for in a different countries, like in Japan. Hi. Ah, I got to go. I got to go. My main motivation why I'm here in Japan is it's, it's,、uh, basically because of one of the basic things I love Japan. I feel really, I, my passion when I was a kid, I watch. Uh, Oshin, I'm not sure if you know Oshin, very old Japanese drama. Oshin, Oshin, <laughs> yeah, very old Oshin, Oshin of Japanese drama. Also, I watch Captain、uh, Tsubasa、uh, and so on. So, they, they, I was very young, I love the Japan. <laughs> but on the other, other part,、uh, Japan and I came from Chile, but I grew up in Chile and Australia. Japan faced、um, another natural disaster, the same like in Chile. So, when I saw the news about the earthquake, when I saw about the tsunamis in Japan, we, in Chile, we have suffered exactly the same. 
So it's very connected with Japan. And this is something very interesting. Uh, Easter Island or Rapa Nui in Chile is part of our Chilean country. When it happens the tsunami in, um, in, in the north of Japan, the Rapa Nui people from Chile, from the small island, they sent a moai to them to reveal the spirit. So I feel really attached, attached with that. We're going to the collaboration, how they want to support each other. Chile is so far away, you know, in, in the south of Chile, in the South America. They have a very, we have a, a common things, community, support each other. And I, really, I was really admired with Japan, the effort to construct and reveal Japan. Chile, we face exactly the same. Communities, when something happens, natural disaster happen, we become together as a team. That's what's one, this is one of the main reasons I, I really want to contribute to Japan, try to bring my expertise to this country. And it's a challenge because I still don't speak the language. I'm learning. I'm about to go to the I'm not sure. But um, that is one of the main reasons, personal reasons. And the second part also, when I see the data, digital numbers, and Japan is getting behind, I feel touched because I live in Japan. I really love Japan. And I love the technology. I grew up with the many technology. I, I was watching when I was in Toshiba TV. So Japan from being a very disruptor of technologies, hardware, now is getting behind. It's a little bit sad. So how my expertise can help Japan? It's bring my knowledge to here. Help people, teach people, collaborate, exchange my expertise. And one day, maybe Manabu, my company, my software will have uh, an investor that this software can help Japanese society. So that's just the main things. Thank you. Thank you. で、あの、あの、あの、知識を生かしたいで、えっと、ま、日本を救いたいっていうところが、あの、大きなチャレンジ精神とかモチベーションになっているそうです。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。My story is not as good as that story. <laughs> but I love Japan. It's my favorite country. Uh, right now I'm on sabbatical, so I can choose any country to be in right now. And I'm going to choose Japan. Uh, big, uh, for similar reasons, I, I, I grew up with a lot of Japanese technology and anime, and um, I was always very curious about Japanese culture. I thought it was so different from my culture. Just like if you go to Australia, you, you feel the same. And there's a curiosity. So what I would say to you, you were about to go to Hungary. Curiosity is the most important thing for you right because you want to you want to understand you I, I will never understand everything about japan um but every time i come i learn a little bit more and i feel a little bit better and I, you, you know it, it it feels some curiosity in me my job is as international business international marketing i work with multinational corporations all of the time um, and I'm, I'm curious about this country more than any other. Uh, I spent a lot of time in Taiwan as well. And uh, it's the other country that I'm very familiar with. I'd spent a lot more time in Taiwan. Um, and I speak Chinese. Um, and I, uh, for that reason, I'm curious. 
So I just keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. And we're very blessed to be able to do that in this world where we actually can go to different countries and actually learn about their cultures and understand. And if I can contribute in some way, I love to do that too. Uh, I've been coming to Japan to teach in Tokyo for probably 15 years. I've taught in Meiji and um, uh, Wasada. I'm at Sophia University at the moment. Um, and anything that I can learn from all of my research and my experience, I'll, I'll pass that over to Japanese students, to faculty members, or to whoever. Maybe that helps. Maybe that doesn't. Japan's very unique um in that sense and that's okay i did some studies in japan a few years ago and i published those studies and it was similar topic to what we're talking about right now is why things don't change in digitalization so i wrote two papers one in the journal of strategic marketing one in asia pacific business journal um about the reasons why that's maybe being blocked and maybe and some of the reasons why some firms are successful and some firms are not and a global mindset is the number one thing if a firm has a global mindset they're much more innovative because they're much more open so be curious ありがとうございます。えっと、立てられる。ところ記事とかでもマーケティングに関する記事とかアジアのあの記事とかでも本当日本はユニークだって紹介をされていてなので本当にあの東京に行かれて早稲田大学とかえっと何でしたっけえっと二次大学とかもあのレクチャーで行かれて